nature is not a place to visit, it's our home. Nature is all that we see. Animals, insects, disappearing into their surroundings. Using deceptions, disguises, lures. Nature is all that we hear. The call of an eagle, the hiss of ocean spray, the rumble of thunder, the doings of a cricket. The wonderful beauty of nature, the crucial, fragile affinity between animal life and their environment. All of this is World of the Wild. The vast plains of Central North America. With trees few and far between, this is a rolling landscape dominated by grasses and herbaceous plants. The word prairie comes from the French meaning meadow. But despite what the name suggests, this is hardly a tame environment. In this exposed landscape, there is nowhere to hide and the wildlife is tested by scorching summers and frozen winters. In this episode, we examine bison, red foxes, wild horses, bald eagles, and prong horns. Across the broad reach of America's Great Plains, there is one iconic animal that conjures both the heroic legends and violent history of the prairie, the bison. The largest land animal in the Americas, the bison is often referred to as buffalo, due to their resemblance to their bovid cousins in Africa and Asia. Feared and celebrated, hunted and worshipped, the American bison is synonymous with its grassland environment. Standing around six feet tall at the shoulder and weighing over a ton, the burly bison is equipped to contend with the wolves and bears that share its prairie habitat. With males and females both armed with horns up to two feet long, it is rare for a healthy adult to fall victim to predation. For all their size, bison can move with surprising speed, capable of maintaining a lumbering gallop over the wide open expanse of the plains. They can also reach charging speeds of over 60 kilometers an hour, three times faster than humans. While often appearing docile, bison have an unpredictably ferocious temperament. And in many parts of modern America, they account for more injuries to humans than bears. Sheltered by the nearly 5,000 kilometer length of the Rocky Mountain Range, the mid-continental location of the American prairie is far from the moderating effects of the ocean and experiences wide fluctuations in temperature, enduring hot, humid summers and cold, frozen winters, the bison stands exposed year-round. The bison's remarkable fur coat is the key adaption to its survival against the elements of the Great Plains. Ironically, it was the demand for bison coats that almost led to their demise, seeing the species hunted close to extinction in the late 19th century. During the winter months, bison sport a thick mane-like coat which so effectively retains heat against their bodies that snow can settle on their outer hairs without melting. 
The distinctive hump of the bison is also an adaptation to their grassland habitat. During the harsh prairie winters, bison use their muscular humps to swing their heavy boned heads back and forth. Acting as snow plows, they clear the way in order to feed on the grasses beneath. Once roaming the huge expanse of the American prairie in their tens of millions, during the 1800s, bisons were tragically overhunted for their meat and hides, taking the species to the brink of extinction. Maintain conservation efforts from environmentalists, ranchers and Native Americans have seen isolated herds of bison make a comeback. While no longer considered endangered, a lack of generic diversity is the legacy of the bison's brush with extinction. Today, efforts are being made to expand conservation herds further into their traditional lands in order to protect the bison into the future. Grasslands are among the world's least protected environments, and the American prairie is no exception. These open plains are not only exposed to the full force of harsh weather conditions, but also to the rapid changes being imposed by an ever-expanding human population. To survive here takes intelligence and resourcefulness. With its legendary reputation for cunning, the red fox is more than up to the task. Although the red fox is the largest of the fox family, it remains a lightly built creature. As such, the fox is vulnerable to other stronger prairie predators, including wolves, coyotes, and eagles. But the fox's light build grants it a nimbleness that it turns to its advantage. Fast and agile, foxes are capable of leaping obstacles over two meters in height and are also adept swimmers, employing their versatility both in their own hunts and in escaping other hunters. The fox family unit is an important part of their success in the wild. The responsibility for looking after the young is shared between the parents and the older children, reinforcing social bonds while allowing the parents the time they need to hunt and provide. Red foxes have a keen sense of smell and excellent eyesight, but it is their acute hearing that sets them apart on the prairie. Utilizing their auditory talents in the hunt for even the smallest game, foxes are capable of detecting the rustling of a tiny rodent from 100 meters away. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Even when hiding underground, prairie mice are not protected from the ears of foxes. Listening through layers of soil or snow, foxes can determine the location of their unseen prey before launching their distinctive pounce attack. The red fox's characteristic bushy tail is an important adaptation to their open plains habitat. Not only does it assist in balance, it also aids in protecting them against the elements. While foxes inhabit burrows during mating periods, for the most part, they sleep in the open. During the harsh winter months on the prairie, temperatures regularly drop below freezing.
but by wrapping themselves in their densely furred tails, foxes are able to maintain their body temperature even when sleeping on snow. Primarily feeding on small prairie animals such as rabbits and rodents, when game becomes scarce, foxes can easily switch their carnivorous diet to an omnivorous one, targeting plants, berries and insects. Foxes are also forward planning, storing food to see them through the lean times. And by managing multiple small cache across their territories, foxes protect themselves against catastrophic losses from raiding animals. Incredibly adaptable creatures, the fox is able to adjust to environmental changes in a way that few other animals can match. On the prairie, there are few images as stirring as a herd of wild horses roaming the rangeland. Considered living symbols of the pioneering spirit of the West, the history of this animal and its connection with the landscape goes back much further. The horse family, Equidae, originally evolved on the plains of North America. However, after the last ice age, the changing climate and the arrival of human hunters resulted in horses dying out on the continent. Fortunately, the horse had spread to Asia, Africa and Europe, saving the species from extinction. And it was from Europe that horses eventually returned to America after an absence of many thousands of years. Today, wild horses occupy much of the United States, with the abundant grasses of the prairie making it a preferred rangeland. They are known as mustangs. Opinion is divided as to whether these creatures are true wild horses or feral animals artificially introduced to the environment. While the domestication of horses has altered the species, from a biological standpoint, many scientists view the Mustang as the modern return of an ancient plains animal. Although adult horses have no natural predators across the plains, horses have evolved as prey animals and prefer to live in the safety of herds. Males compete for mating rights with females, and herds tend to consist of a dominant stallion with a harem of mares and their young. Across the open prairie, mustangs are known to look after their injured herd members and are able to live long lives of around 25 years in the wild. On the American grassland, wild horses are in conflict for grazing areas with domestic cattle. With a faster digestion rate, Horses must consume more forage than cattle, but can obtain sufficient nutrition from poorer quality food sources, thus surviving in areas where cattle would starve. The prairie environment sustains a number of wild species that rely on the grasslands for forage, as well as domesticated livestock. The wild horse population is capable of doubling every four years and without human intervention can threaten the balance of the plains ecosystem. For the Mustang, it is not a question of survival, but a question of at what level the population will be maintained.
From above, the true scale and immensity of this grassland environment becomes apparent. Ruling the skies above the prairie is the symbolic animal of the United States of America, the bald eagle. Bald eagles are seabirds, but are such adept hunters that they can be found throughout most of the country. Here on the inland plain, tree cover is limited, so few eagles can nest on the prairie. Instead, they use their uninterrupted view of the landscape to hunt land-based prey. In ancient times, this grassland was covered by a shallow inland sea. When the waters receded, around 55 million years ago, they left behind the flattened expanse that became the prairie. Gliding above this wide open landscape, the bald eagle utilizes its eyesight to an almost unfair advantage. With eyes almost as big as humans, the bald eagle is thought to see the world with a sharpness at least four times better than ours. A transparent inner eyelid slides across the eye every few seconds, wiping it free of dirt. Dual centers of focus allow eagles to see forward and sideways at the same time. Hovering hundreds of meters over the exposed terrain, the eagle is granted unimpeded views of all the activity below. And on a landscape this broad, little can escape the eagle's eye. As seabirds, bald eagles subsist primarily on a seafood diet and even in inland environments, they keep a close watch on the groundwater for signs of fish. Diving from above with speeds over 150 kilometers an hour, bald eagles dispatch their quarry with their highly developed talons immobilizing prey with a grip strength 10 times greater than that of a human the bald eagle finishes the job by sinking its hind claws into the victim's vital organs the majesty and power of the bald eagle has made it a sacred bird in almost all native american cultures for the Plains Indians who inhabit the prairie region of the United States, the bald eagle features prominently in their ceremonial sun dance. During the ritual, a medicine man waves a fan of eagle feathers from the sick tribe members to the sky so that the eagle may carry their prayers for healing to the creator. The bald eagle's distribution throughout the United States is a conservation success story, with the species returning from the brink of domestic extinction. Hunting and habitat loss played a role, but the biggest culprit was the pesticide DDT, which caused sterilization of birds or eggs too brittle for brooding parents to sit on. A coordinated conservation effort across North America, as well as the banning of DDT, prevented the birds from disappearing from the United States altogether. Today, the eagles are no longer on the endangered list and are once again present in healthy numbers all over the country. In the world of the wild, survival of the fittest is a fact of life. Here on the open plains of the prairie, 
One species has taken this motto quite literally. Often referred to as American antelope, pronghorns are hoofed mammals native to the grasslands of North America. But despite their antelope-like appearance, pronghorns are actually more closely related to giraffes. The second fastest terrestrial animal on the planet, the pronghorn is a highly evolved runner. The prairie predators can only stand and watch as their would-be snack is running away. With top speeds estimated to be around 90 kilometers an hour, pronghorns can comfortably hold a half-paced gallop for miles on end. So not only are pronghorns the fastest animal in the Western Hemisphere, they are also the most durable. Both sprinters and marathoners, for pronghorns, survival on the plains really does come down to being the fittest. The fleet-footed pronghorn has a range of adaptations that allow for such speed across the expansive terrain of the prairie. A light bone structure and a short coat of hollow hair means that the pronghorn is lightweight. Cushioned toes on their hooves act as shock absorbers and an enlarged heart, lungs and windpipe allow extra air to be taken into the body while running. Pronghorns are also highly alert to the dangers of the prairie home. Stalked by predators such as cougars, coyotes and eagles, they have keenly developed vision. Preferring to graze in exposed grassland, they are able to identify predators over a kilometer away. When danger is spotted, the distinctive patch of long white hair on the pronghorn's rump stands on end. Raising their hair to raise the alarm, this unique warning system alerts fellow herd members to the threat. The question of why the pronghorn is so much faster than the carnivores that roam the prairie has puzzled researchers. Being able to outrun your pursuers is one thing, but leaving them this far behind seems excessive. The answer lies in the distant past. Fossilized remains of an extinct cat species known as the American cheetah has led researchers to believe that around 10,000 years ago, the prairie was home to much faster carnivores. The hypothesis is that the pronghorn evolved its speed in response to these super-fast cats. And while the American cheetah is long extinct, the pronghorn continues to run without rival on the modern prairie. Journeying from their highland summer range to their lowland winter range, pronghorns undertake the longest overland migration of any animal in North America. Close to 250 kilometers each way, this epic trek in search of feeding grounds is testament to the endurance of these remarkable athletes. Preserving wildlife corridors across such a vast landscape is challenging. But to protect a migrating animal, it is vital to protect its migration route. The flat, seemingly endless grassland of the prairie is a unique ecosystem inhabited by a diversity of life. In this episode, we have explored bison, red foxes, wild horses, bald eagles, and pronghorns. Once covering most of North America, since European settlement, the prairie has been much reduced, and today is considered one of the least protected environments in the United States. 
Conservation and regeneration efforts are gaining momentum. And success stories, such as the bison and bald eagles, are proving the worth of such endeavors. This work must continue and grow in order to preserve this cherished landscape as one of the wonders of the world of the wild. Nature is not a place to visit, it's our home. Nature is all that we see. Animals, insects, disappearing into their surroundings. Using deceptions, disguises, lures. Nature is all that we hear. The call of an eagle, the hiss of ocean spray, the rumble of thunder, the doings of a cricket. The wonderful beauty of nature, the crucial, fragile affinity between animal life and their environment. All of this is World of the Wild. The world's largest and most populated continent, Asia, is also home to some of the world's most extraordinary tropical jungles. From the evergreen lowland ranges to the cool cloud forests of the mountain regions, there are areas of jungle habitat here dating back over 100 million years. In this episode, we venture into the heart of the jungle to learn the wisdom of Asian elephants. Hang with nocturnal fruit bats, learn the Porsche spider's ingenious hunting strategies, bask in the rivers with water buffalo, and witness the python's deadly embrace. Revered for centuries in Asia, with important roles in religion and culture across the continent, elephants are an iconic inhabitant of the Asian jungle. However, their future in this environment is less assured. Male Asian elephants stand around three meters high at the shoulder and can weigh over five tons. Marginally smaller than their African cousins, they are the second largest terrestrial animal in the world. But on the vast continent of Asia, no other animal even comes close. For all their size, Asian elephants can be remarkably discreet. Their grey coat offers a surprisingly effective camouflage in their shady jungle habitat. And wide feet with thick pads of fatty tissues distribute their weight, allowing them to walk in near silence. Unlike their African counterparts, most female Asian elephants lack tusks, and so do some males. However, on both continents, poaching for black market ivory as well as meat and leather continues to be a threat. While sexually mature males are more solitary, elephants are social animals and tend to live in tightly knit family groups. With each adult consuming 150 kilograms of vegetation a day, few environments are capable of supporting a herd of mega herbivores. Few environments, that is, except the luscious Asian jungle. In fact, in this habitat, it seems the elephants are struggling to keep up, having developed specialized molars for breaking down the fibrous plant matter of the jungle. Asian elephants will nonetheless go through six sets of teeth in their lifetime. Unfortunately, cultivated crops, such as bananas and rice, are also favored foods for elephants bringing them into conflict with farmers. With agriculture continuing to spread into the jungles, these conflicts show no signs of easing. 
The tropical climate that prevails over much of the Asian jungle means there is no dry season. Downpours can occur here at any time and every month there is a minimum of 60 millimeters rainfall. For a species that lacks sweat glands, in the warm jungle environment, rain is a vital asset. And so too are the abundant jungle waterways the rain provides. Requiring over 100 litres of water a day, more if bathing, elephants are never found far from a water source. And with the jungle's reliable network of streams, creeks and rivers, they never have to be. With such a huge surface area of skin, water is crucial for elephants to cool themselves. But their frequent visits to the jungle waterways are also valuable in reinforcing social bonds. Once ranging across most of continental Asia, today elephants are found only in fragmented populations in just 15% of their original range. Cut off from their ancient migratory routes by human settlement and infrastructure, habitat loss is the elephant's greatest threat. Nature reserves and replanting programs are helping offset the degradation of the elephant's habitat, but a more unified effort is required to protect the jungles and allow this colossus to once again thrive across the continent. different breed of jungle inhabitant takes to the skies. High above the dangers of the jungle floor, fruit bats dedicate their days to an inverted form of rest and relaxation. Hanging by their toes for hours on end, bats have developed specialized tendons that allow them to cling to their roosts without expending energy. Despite having free reign over the jungle skies, fruit bats are highly social animals. Preferring to remain in close proximity to one another, they roost and feed in dense congregations. Commonly known as flying foxes for their fox-like faces, Fruit bats are among the largest bat varieties in the world. Some species boasting weights of up to 1.6 kilograms and wingspans over a meter and a half wide, they are properly known as megabats. With a wide distribution, megabat populations can be found in parts of the Mediterranean, Africa and Australia with the greatest range of species found in Asia. The only mammals capable of flying, the majority of bats are hunters, feeding on insects and small animals. But the jungles of Asia offer many food sources, and the fruit bat has adapted to feed exclusively on the abundance of fruit varieties that grow here. Distinguished from the majority of bat species, megabats in the jungles of Asia have lost their capacity to navigate through echolocation. In seeking out fruit, the senses of smell and sight are far more important, and the facial structure of fruit bats with long noses, enlarged eyes, and reduced ears has evolved to reflect this. With teeth adapted to bite through hard fruit skins, megabats often won't consume the entire fruit, preferring to suck the energy-rich juices inside. Their primarily liquid diet aids in their rapid digestive system, and consuming over twice their body weight in a single night, fruit bats process their feeds quickly, 
so that they remain light enough to fly. The voracious feeding of megabats provides important services to the jungle ecosystem. Flying from tree to tree, grains of pollen are distributed via the bat's fur, allowing the vital process of pollination to take place. Fruit seeds are also distributed through their nutritionally rich excrement, some of which will take root on the jungle floor and grow into new fruit trees. Come dawn, the bats return to their roosts, where they will spend the daylight hours recovering from their busy night. The bats return to their roosts and settle in for a day of rest in their inimitable upside-down style. With the coming of dusk, this hardy species will take to the wing once more venturing into the darkening jungle in their tens of thousands for another night of feeding, a cycle that both the bats and the jungles depend on. The bountiful jungles of Asia are crawling with a life, not all of which is obvious at first glance. By far the most abundant and diverse life forms to be found here are the invertebrates. Existing within their own small scale jungle world, these animals can easily be overlooked by the casual observer. But each creature has a distinct role to play within the larger jungle ecosystem and each exhibits a range of specialized adaptations in order to survive here. Occupying a unique place in this complex web of life is the Porsche spider, which is adapted to outwit and feed upon their own kind. Adept and clever predator of the invertebrate world, the Porsche spider is first and foremost a master of self-preservation. Vulnerable to other invertebrates as well as larger jungle species such as birds and reptiles, the distinctive walking gait of the Porsche assists their already effective body camouflage. Pausing at irregular intervals and continuously waving their legs with varied speed and timing, the Porsche mimics the tricks of light from the forest canopy. In this way, they are able to pursue their prey through the often treacherous habitat without being predated upon themselves. With their favorite food source being the other spiders of the jungle, Porsches are noted for their intelligent range of hunting tactics and problem-solving abilities traits more commonly associated with much larger creatures. Willing to take long detours in order to approach their prey unseen, the Porsche spider has learned to alter its technique to get the better of the jungle's countless other arachnids. Tiptoeing on the webs of other spiders, the Porsche will disguise the vibrations it creates by timing its approach to coincide with the gentle gusts of the breeze. Once the Porsche is within range, a straightforward ambush attack can be utilized. As jumping spiders, Porsches leap with speed and accuracy, landing atop their quarry and immediately administering their venom. The stunned victim never even knows what hit it.
This brutal and effective surprise attack allows the canny Porsche spider to feed on fellow arachnids up to twice its own size. Hunting by day or night, the Porsche spider's ability to outwit their prey in the Asian jungle is unaffected. One of their most deceptive and brilliant techniques involves entering the web of other spiders and drawing them out through the trialing of different vibrations. Patiently testing alternating patterns, the Porsche will use their quarry's web to mimic the vibrations of a trapped insect. until their prey makes the fatal mistake of coming to investigate. As long as their habitat and fellow spiders remain undisturbed, this smart and adaptable creature will continue to thrive. The jungles of Asia are fed by a network of rivers sneaking their way through the trees. It is these waterways that shape the jungle landscape and the life that inhabits it. Never far from the water, the aptly named Asian water buffalo inhabits the swamps and wet grasslands that the jungle river ecosystem supports. Asian buffalo spend great parts of their day basking in the water to regulate their body temperature in the hot, humid forests and to avoid pests. They have also adapted to graze with their heads submerged, pulling up the nutritionally rich aquatic plants that grow underwater. They chew above the surface before diving for another mouthful. While some of the plants they feed on are valued by farmers, and thus bring the wild buffalo into conflict with humans, other plants, such as the water hyacinth, are an invasive species in Asia, and in feeding on them, the buffalo assists in keeping the jungle waterways clear. Hybrids of wild and domesticated varieties are more commonly encountered in the jungle and display a range of physical characteristics. Weighing well over a ton and standing nearly two meters tall, Asian buffalo are amongst the largest of the Bovidae family. Their distinctive horns, however, are bigger than any living bovid species. Thick-based and spreading up to two meters wide, these massive horns are sported by both males and females and can be used in fighting, self-defense, and most frequently, in creating mud holes in the ground. Their self-made mud holes allow water buffaloes to engage in one of their favorite behaviors, wallowing. By rolling about in the sludge, Asian buffalo are able to coat themselves in a thick layer of mud, not only keeping them cool, but protecting their skin from the ravages of the sun and jungle parasites. When parasites do set in, the buffalo have developed a symbiotic relationship with several species of jungle bird. Allowing their winged friends free reign, the birds are granted an easy meal, while the buffalo is relieved of the ticks and mites that cling to their coats. Domesticated and selectively bred over thousands of years, the water buffalo is today the most dependent upon domestic animal in the world providing labor as well as meat and milk. But it is their domestication and the ever-expanding imprint of agriculture in the jungle regions that threatens to wipe out the true wild buffalo. Although closely related, wild buffalo are a separate species to the domestic variety 
and genetically pure lines are rapidly diminishing and increasingly fragmented throughout the jungle. It is believed there are still sufficient numbers to support genetic diversity into the future, but preserving enough jungle habitat and keeping hybrid varieties from contaminating the pure lines are significant challenges that remain for this endangered species. From the trees to the undergrowth and into the waters, the pythons of the Asian jungle are masters of their environment. Predominantly ambush hunters, pythons are patient predators. Well camouflaged in the jungles of Asia, pythons can take up position virtually anywhere as they wait for their prey to come to them. While all snakes are descended from a venomous ancestor, the python family has lost its ability to produce venom. Instead, pythons utilize their long, muscular bodies to wrap their victims in a constrictive embrace, opting for suffocation over poison. With 26 distinctive python species spread across Asia, Africa and Australia, the year-round warm temperatures of the Asian jungle provide the optimum climate for pythons, allowing them to efficiently draw heat from their surroundings. As a result, these jungles are not only home to a dramatically varied range of snakes, but also the biggest. While several Asian species are capable of overpowering an adult deer, this environment is home to the longest snake on the planet, a six and a half meter long reticulated python. Across all species of python, jungle rodents comprise a great part of their diet. And upon a successful strike, the quarry is immobilized by the snake's backward curving teeth while their powerful body coils around to make the kill. Swallowing their meals whole, the python's free-floating jaw allows it to slowly work its mouth around the victim's body, slathering it in saliva and assist its passage into the stomach where it will be digested over the course of days or even weeks. Excellent climbers and deadly amongst the undergrowth, pythons are also superb swimmers. With much of the Asian jungle crossed by rivers and wetlands, these snakes are granted free reign over their habitat, accounting for their wide distribution throughout the jungle. As egg-laying snakes, the female python will incubate her clutch to maintain the embryos at a constant temperature, vigilantly guarding the unhatched young from the other predators of the jungle. She will not eat until they hatch. The warm and humid jungle climes assist the mother in the incubation, but it is her monitoring of the egg's temperature and the adjustment of her body to keep them within the optimum range Left to fend for themselves, these young snakes not only face the natural threats of the jungle, but man-made hazards as well. Particularly vulnerable to forest fires, the deliberate slash and burn practices of palm oil plantations are, every year, killing increasing numbers of pythons, along with other wildlife. Until these practices are stamped out, 
the future of these snakes and the environment they have so successfully adapted to remains at risk. With unrivaled biological diversity, the jungles of Asia are home to some of the planet's most varied and fascinating species. We have seen just a few. The stately Asian elephant, voracious fruit bats, ingenious Porsche spiders, iconic water buffalo, and constricting pythons. As the most populated continent continues to expand, the jungles of Asia are among the most rapidly disappearing habitats on Earth. With deforestation threatening to wipe them out, agriculture and palm oil plantations demand vast areas of land and logging operations, both legal and illegal, continue to ravage the jungles as well as the wildlife that depends on them. from the unsustainable profits of industry to continued benefits of conservation. The jungles of Asia are to be saved.